Um, let me ask you, who is of going through all of them? So let's let's broaden out a little bit more than just uh, Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. Favorite villain? Mm. Favorite villain? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't really have a favorite villain. Um, and I know you want to try to get away from, from Justice League and uh, Justice League Unlimited. Um, but we did, actually didn't touch on this episode. Um, this is one of my favorite episodes. Uh, and, and it's one that I've thought about a lot. And actually thought that at some point I might even do a video or something you know, like that uh, about it. Do you remember the episode... I believe it's called Words Over Actions. This was the episode uh, where, um, you know, I guess he's a general now, uh, works with Amanda Waller. Uh, in the past, he was basically, you know, fighting Nazis. Uh, and, you know, we fast forward to, you know, the current time, and he wants to try to basically hold the justice league accountable um you know, Iro? For their actions. uh i cannot remember his name i <laughs> sometimes i'm really bad with names but is this uh, the episode where he where the guy becomes like the weird doomsday fella yes that's yes, it okay with um with not a single mainstream hero in it and still exactly. an incredible yes. episode Yes, uh, I I think that that's like one of my favorite episodes of, you know, any of this stuff uh, because of that reason, mm -hmm. because you don't have the people that have powers, uh, you know, and what ends up happening by the end of that, you know, episode is that the, the, the people that are at the parade you know, that are, that are actually, you know, getting hurt and, and killed because of this guy, because he just goes off and forgets, you know, his core principles. Uh, and, you know, he's, he's, he's trying so hard to fight for good that he's actually, you know, being evil. Uh, and, you know, the, the people at the parade are like, hey, they actually stand up for these heroes and say, look, we're not going to let you, you know, do this anymore. Uh, and he comes to his senses and he leaves. Uh, and, you know, I just thought, oh, my God, that's a damn good episode. <laughs> so it's it's funny you said, um, I know you wanted to get away from JL and JLU. Because I, op I made sure to open it because I expected you to say Mark Hamill Joker. Oh, <laughs> Um, no, actually, I, I was trying to think a little bit out of the box. Yeah. That episode had made so much of an impression on me. Uh, I just, I had to find a way to bring it up somewhere. It's in our such a good episode. But mine, so my favorite, I think he's my favorite superhero. He might be just my favorite DC superhero, but my, but he really might be my favorite, and it's Superman. I love Superman. And there, I love seeing the power of Superman. And there's only one person that ever actually allowed Superman to cut loose. And it's Darkseid. And right. the final episode of the DCAU, which is the 2006 episode of, the, of Justice League Unlimited, The Destroyer. Mm -hmm. Pits Dark Side against Superman, and Superman wipes the floor with him. He finally cuts loose, and Dark Side actually only, I guess you could say, wins because he uses, I'll call it magic. Um, it's their, you know, their science that appears to be magic almost. Um, and then, obviously, you know, Lex or Luthor comes in and basically saves the day. But Superman is just finally, and he because because if you've watched, you know, he's got all this uh, tension from past episodes, 
and it's just boiling up and finally he gets to release it and he never he he says it you know he spends all his time holding back treating everything like cardboard because he's afraid he'll kill someone he'll hurt someone but you can take it can't you and what we have here is a rare opportunity for me to cut loose and you hear that you just go oh Oh, we're about to see some stuff. <laughs> oh, this is going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I guess he was holding in all of that, uh, you know, frustration, obviously, because, you know, he's he's an alien among humans. So he kind of does have to treat us with kid gloves. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he, he lost his home i mean he's 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 a person out of place you know he had to come here because you know his home was taken away from him uh and that's still with him all the time uh so yeah no that was that was definitely a good one Mm -hmm. now what about your favorite like not the main seven that not the first seven who's your favorite hero outside of the first seven so I guess technically, who's your favorite hero of Just League Unlimited minus those seven? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I guess I could. I I like Vixen. Um, and again, <laughs> uh, this this ties into uh, Shiera Hall because you mm-hmm. know, obviously, they had this competition uh, over John Stewart. And yeah, they did. Um, you know, this, I, and, and this, they kind of rode the line just a little bit with that relationship, you know, between, okay, well, is this a kid, you know, or an adult thing? You, maybe you had to be a little bit older, maybe like 13 or, you know, older to kind of, you know, uh, be appropriate, uh, for some of the stuff that was mm-hmm. happening in their relationship. Uh, but, uh, I, I'll, I'll say Vixen because, I really appreciated the episode where, uh, you know, after they were put together, and, and it was actually Martian Manhunter that put them together on a team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and John Stewart was like, Are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you doing this? You're going to rip each other apart. And, you know, uh, John was just like, No, they're the, you know, they're the ones that need to be on this team. Uh, he was like, I don't care together. about your daily life. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, it's a so, really good episode. Yeah, and so they do the thing, and you know, as soon as they come back, John is you know waiting for them uh, to to find out what happened. You know, did they hurt each other? You know, did they fight? What happened? Uh, so they both walk past him, and mm-hmm. you know, they go and have a drink together, and they discuss john stewart uh and they basically come to the conclusion that okay well you know it's just best woman wins you know they they kind of handle it like you know adults uh and i always appreciated that episode because (laughs) you just didn't think that it was gonna go uh that way and i just felt like that was a very adult way for them to handle a complicated situation because they obviously came, you know, Shaira had the relationship with John first, you know, she left because of her, you know, betraying everybody basically. Uh, And then Vixen came into the picture and, you know, John started a relationship with her and uh, you know, it, it wasn't really anybody's fault. It just, well, I, it kind of was Shaira's fault, but, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you just know, slight it, treason. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I always appreciated that, uh, those moments, uh, and that episode because, it was just handled so, you know, you you would expect that Jerry Springer type of, you know, oh, knock down, drag funny. out, like, oh, I'm going to tear your mm-hmm. hair out and, you know, all this other stuff. But they handle it like real women should handle uh, a situation like that. And I always appreciated that. So it's funny you say that because uh, I think like two seasons later, 
we got the grudge match episode where all the basically all the women of the Justice League are put under hypnosis and they just start fighting each other. Yeah. <laughs> and we finally get the fight between Vixen and Shaira. Right. Yeah. Uh wow. <laughs> and then we get to see my favorite blonde superhero, Black Canary. I like Black Canary. Love uh, Black Canary. <laughs> Uh, and I always just thought it was uh, s- since you brought brought her up, uh, that makes me think of uh, of Green Arrow, uh, mm-hmm. because Green Arrow, you know, they were trying to get him to join the Justice yep. League, and you know, he was like, "No, I'm not a joiner." Uh, and then as soon as he sees Black Canary, he's like, "Oh, oh yeah. maybe I'm gonna well, rethink this." I mean, I would. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. um but you know speaking of green arrow one of the things that i really like about him is there there's two moments in the show because he's not he's not an overly well-developed character because in unlimited they they can't really develop characters because it's a new episode new story every episode and they can't use the same characters in every episode like they were able to in justice league um but there are two moments that you really get this kind of sense of exactly who Green Arrow is. And it's in that uh, in that first episode where he says, you know, I'm just out for the little guy. Because big organizations like yours usually end up stepping on the little guy. Mm-hmm. And then in, I think it's the second season, the end of the second season, that they're saying we're going to disband the Justice League. And he calls them out. He calls them all out. The the mightiest people in the world, he calls them out and says, if you want to quit because you think you've done your fair share, that's great. We'll throw you a parade. But if you're quitting because it's easier than fighting, then you're not the heroes we thought you were. Yeah, I do. I have I, I have a little bit of a soft spot for his uh, his yeah. character in these uh, in these episodes. I, I I appreciated the fact that he, like you said, cared about you know the little guy um because i mean obviously it can't always be we're fighting off aliens to protect the planet <laughs> right well, and what's funny <laughs> you got to think about the people that have you know their stores and shops exactly and, you yeah know, their little lives that they're you know they got to go to work every day mm-hmm. um they need help too he's very much a batman character but they really couldn't be more different uh, agreed. Agreed. Um, you know, he was a little bit more open, uh, you know, than, than Bruce was obviously Bruce is, you know, more closed off. He's very, you know, focused, uh, and you know, he's, he's keeping secrets, you know, he, he knows everybody's secret yep. identity. <laughs> oh, great scene in Starcrest. Let's talk about that scene. Uh, so when, um, it, they're they're in the street. You know what? I don't normally bring it up, but I'm gonna pull it up on YouTube. Um, so you know, this starts with them basically finding out, oh, the really the best way to escape is to hide who we are. Right. And so this is what happens. I mean, I trust you guys, but I'm not sure I'm ready to Wally West, Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne. Whoa. <laughs> 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 I mean, <laughs> You find out you've been fighting with the what first, second richest man on the planet for the last uh year. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? And I always wondered why we didn't get a Wally West flash instead of a Barry Allen. Um <laughs> but we don't have to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you yeah, know what i mean <laughs> uh, i i do because i've uh, i've always liked wally west more than barry allen um and that's that's mostly just because that's wally west in the in justice league right right you know for me you know these were these were the first dc characters i've ever i ever saw so though that's my batman that's my superman um flash is wally west to me 
Diana does not have a sword. Yeah. <laughs> she just, she kicks ass with her hands. Yeah. Um, no, I, wow. I, I really, I feel like I'm going to have to do another rewatch after yeah, having this conversation. It's, <laughs> it's funny because, um, you know, if you, if you pull up the DCAU on Wikipedia, it says that it ended with this with uh, with Just League Unlimited in 2006, but H uh, I guess Warner uh, released a movie in 2019, I think it was, called Just League versus the Fatal Five, and it was done in the same style as the same art style as the DCAU. So mm -hmm. for I, I watched it. It wasn't it wasn't a necessarily great movie that you know at the same time that they were doing the flashpoint storyline, they did mm -hmm. this and the flashpoint storyline was better. This was about I don't know if you saw it. Uh it sounds familiar. I probably have. I've seen so much DCAU mm -hmm. stuff. Uh so and, this and was about the, the female Green Lantern that she just kind of like found the ring and she hadn't gotten the training yet. And the fa the fatal five basically showed up from the 28th century or whatever to kill mm -hmm. her, to get the ring. Um, right. And it wasn't, it wasn't great. It did a very good job of having a good female character. Cause like mm -hmm. I said, you know, there's, there's a lot of female characters today that you feel like they, they become the character just because they can say she. Right. And she was better than that. It wasn't quite as it wasn't quite as good as Black Canary or um um the Huntress, but it, she was still fine. The thing that was so great about the movie though was for you know 67 minutes, I was transported back to my living room you know, in 2003, watching this animation style. It was so right. cool to be back in that world. Yeah. Um, you know, I definitely have uh, so much love for the DCAU. And, you know, that's a, a, a reason why, um, you know, I know we don't want to go too negative, but I had so much disappointment with what was done in live action. Uh, with mm -hmm. the DC EU, because uh, I really just wanted that stuff done in live action. <laughs> I, I completely agree. It would have just been money in the bank for them. While I did not hate uh, what Zack Snyder and Josh Whedon and then the next guy did, um, what I wanted was this, and mm -hmm. I, I think, yeah, like we've said, it would have been a license to print money. Yeah. Um, wow, you brought up Huntress. Every time you bring up a character, then I'm thinking about, <laughs> you know, episodes. And I'm thinking about uh, the relationship between Huntress and the question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you want to talk about a weird dude. I know, I know. But my whole thing was the whole time, because obviously there were very heavy, you know, romantic sexual vibes between them yeah but I'm absolutely like, he doesn't have a face <laughs> yeah, yeah. well so you, you remember it's a mask yeah yeah so yeah it's it's uh you know there's there's masks and then there's what he's got right no but i'm just thinking uh i'm, I'm thinking if i'm her like okay what because you know in in real life we see people's faces yeah uh and but she didn't see his you know up front so what is it you know about him because he was awkward he was yeah, really and she, awkward and you could, but you could tell that and and you know there's the argument to be made that you know she needed something from him so was she just flirting to get it but you don't i don't really i don't think that was it i think there was an actual um I wouldn't go as far to say like love or relationship, but maybe like a, 
a sexy a respect almost a connection. Yeah. That's the best. That's mm -hmm. what I wish she had said that earlier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there was a there there was a very cool vibe between the two of them. Mm -hmm. And you know, we get I think we get like three or four episodes with that connection. Mm -hmm. And my honestly, I think my favorite one with them is when he goes to I think he goes to yeah, he goes to kill Lex Luthor so that Superman won't. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he gets the crap beat out of him, and Superman and Huntress go to save him. And Captain Adam shows up to fight Superman. And he tells him, You're well, you can't go in. And Superman says, Step aside. No, you can't go in. Dude, and this is Hunter speaking. Superman just told you to step aside. And it's like, yeah, dude, Superman just told you to move. You better move. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, gosh, I'm definitely going to have to go back uh, tonight in, and start rewatching some of this stuff. Because, you know, just talking about it. Because every, every time you mention somebody, it's like, oh, I remember this episode now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's early. It's funny. Earlier, you mentioned Doctor Fate, uh -huh. and Doctor Fate is a very interesting character. And I didn't see Black Adam, but I honestly want to because of Doctor Fate. Also, because Pierce Brosnan is my man. I love the guy. Um, I love Pierce Brosnan. Yes, I remember excellent Remington Steel. Steel. <laughs> oh, see, I never, I never watched Remington Steel. I watched, yeah. uh, I watched Devil yeah. Seven. Yeah, basically that was like his audition. For, yeah, because he uh, was he was pitched it that they, they wanted him when uh, when Timothy was cast, and he said mm -hmm. he thought he was too young. Mm -hmm. And then he went and did Remington, Remington Steel, got a little experience, and they said, "Okay, well now you have to." Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, Doctor Fate, you know, we get we get. I think three or four episodes of Dr. Fate in Justice League and mm -hmm. Justice League Unlimited. But I think one of the coolest ones is the one where uh, the android returns mm -hmm. and he, he pops up basically at the, at the end of the line to stop the Green Lantern from killing the android. And he, you get, you get this idea that this is a powerful kid guy. And mm -hmm. then all the Green Lanterns, surviving Green Lanterns, light their rings, and you hear John go, "Not even you have the power to stand against the Green Lantern Corps." And I'm just like, "Oh, how powerful are Green Lanterns?" Mm -hmm. It's so. And then you know we got um, I don't. Do you ever watch Young Justice? I have watched Young Justice and. Uh, you know, speaking of Young Justice, have you ever seen Titans? Uh, I know it's live uh, action. Live action? Uh, I have yeah. not watched uh, it, no. Yeah, one of my biggest laments with that show is that I wish they had just done a version of Young Justice. I thought that that was more of a superior uh, mm -hmm. story, uh, you know, that they could have told. Uh, so yeah, I definitely I'm familiar with the Young Justice. So uh, stuff you know we we get the Doctor Fate episodes in Young Justice, mm -hmm. and those they expound on this really mythical creature or character that just I feel like Justice League set up. Obviously, Doctor Fate's been around for a while, but I being more of a normie for the DC than I am for Marvel, I was not aware of this guy until mm -hmm. Justice League. And going back and watching the Justice League episodes after having seen the, the more information from Young Justice, it really builds on just how big of a guy this Dr. Fate is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I actually did watch Black Adam. Uh, and I okay. actually, you know, if, if, if we're giving it a rating, I, I gave it a 7 out of 10. Um, okay, well, that's, a, probably that's a good movie. Don't. Yeah, a lot of people probably don't like it, um, you know, plus minus on The Rock, you know, whether or not you thought he was mm -hmm. a good Black Adam or not. Um, but no, I definitely appreciated Piers Brosnan as uh, Dr. Fate and uh, that because I, I was always a fan of his. 
Uh, so I was glad to see him in the movie. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to say, you know, hands down, I recommend you watching it, uh, but I would at least try to see his part of it. <laughs> so there, did you see the interview uh, between him and the guy from his hometown? I did not see it. I oh, heard I'll about see, it. it. Man, he... You, this this raw emotion hits him and it's only there for like three or four seconds mm -hmm. but it you you see pierce brosnan as a as a person right then mm -hmm. and it's such a cool moment um but what i want to end with is do you remember the greatest story never told booster gold you know what I'll I'll be honest with you when when James Gunn came out and said that he was going to start building his DCU and Booster Gold was mentioned a smile came to my face cuz I was like yes. damn he could do Booster Gold yes. the right way <laughs> oh, imagine all you 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 cast uh I I would I would go find an actor that played sports in high school didn't really make it in college and tried to act. That's mm -hmm. who I would cast because Booster, that's exactly who Booster Gold is. He wants the fame. He doesn't really want to put in the work, but he will if he, you know, if, if he has to, to save himself. And that's what the greatest story never told is. And mm -hmm. it's such a, it's such a weird story because all this stuff's happening while this giant thing's happening over here. But he's the only one that knows about it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the live action version of that. I feel I do have hope for the live action stuff with James Gunn at the helm. I'm not sure how you feel about it. Um, you know, he's I'm definitely a comics guy. Since, yeah, I'm more hopeful since I saw the casting for Superman. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I definitely had appreciation appreciation for those castings mm -hmm. um oh uh, you know as we as we wind down what uh what are you and the other oh i'm not no i'm not gonna say that because i might get in trouble um what do you and nikki have coming up uh what do we have coming up uh well uh the next thing that we're about to put out is uh a little short uh about uh hot d uh, because we just had really? Emmy, Emmy nominations uh, oh, you know, yes. come out. And, uh, you know, we express our disappointment that uh, our man, Patty Considine. The best uh, actor get... of 2022 <laughs> didn't get a nomination. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, of the course, we have to get our salty actor. take on it. Yeah. The <laughs> absolute best actor of last year. Reza Power mm -hmm. didn't get anyone nominated, did they? I don't believe so. I don't believe I saw okay. them um, on any. Oh, uh, well, they they couldn't have because we would have that would Twitter would have blown up. Yeah, I think so. I yeah, think so, so there, there's no way. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, awesome. Um, and where can where can everyone find y'all? Uh, well, hey, go to YouTube at the Salty Inferno. Uh, and, uh, you know, we just love to uh, give our spicy hot takes on, you know, just about everything. Uh, and I am also, I have another channel, uh, Fan Shot First with Abby Kays. Um, so if you want to hear, you know, from me, uh, you know, you can, you can check me out there as well. I will put both links in the description. Okay, appreciate that. This and was a that, great conversation. If if everyone's still here, I'm still I'm not sure how long the video will be when it uploads. It might be two parts. But if if you're still here, thank you so much. You know, like and subscribe, go over to the Salty Inferno and and go over to Fan Shot First and get all of Felicity's other spicy hot takes. As always, <laughs> this you. is Kayla with King's Advisors, and thank you so much for stopping by.